We like to think that we live in a nice, safe neighborhood. The truth is that a burglary occurs every 13 seconds, and homes without a security system have a 300% greater chance of getting broken into. How many homes in your neighborhood were robbed yesterday? You need to start protecting your home and family today. Call now to get state-of-the-art protection. To keep your family and property safe, call the number on your screen now. Representatives are standing by to assist you. Turnpike, Turnpike Sports, Sports Book, Book Report. Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book available anywhere in New Jersey. BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E, and you get a risk-free bet up to $300 and 20 bonus dollars at BorgataCasino.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, in this week this week's episode of the book report, we've got numbers, we've got a couple launches to talk about. Technically, I guess they're launches. Uh, there are uh, some different changes in approved sports betting events, and also a broadcast or a betcast that just happened. We've got legislation. Boy, do we have legislation! We've got <laughs> New York, Maryland, uh, Arizona, Arizona, Connecticut. Arizona has been in the news a lot. Florida threw in a couple of things for us. Tennessee. Uh, and also a bunch of deals, especially a mega deal that I was anticipating after I saw the NFL Genius Sports uh, data deal that happened. They have – I'm just going to go right into it because uh, yeah. why not? I, I saw the most interesting um, headline on that one, Try Exclusive deal because yeah. it's with three sports book operators they call they said try exclusive well it's try exclusive because it's a different tier than what they're going to be doing with other sports books okay these are the main sports betting partners so uh, so who are the three sports betting operators that the NFL did a try exclusive deal with Caesars and remember I mentioned last week Caesars had that deal with the NFL for gaming anyway. Sure. So it makes sense that Caesars would be one of the sports betting partners. DraftKings and FanDuel. Makes sense. So the big three, I guess. They're the big you three. Know. and uh, they, Well, if you want to throw BetMGM in there, too. Well, there, you got to wait but, there. But Caesars, FanDuel, and DraftKings are the big three. I wonder if they will make room for BetMGM as an as a, uh, you know. official sports betting operator tier. But they said they're going to be doing other other tier levels, different types of deals with everybody else. A lot of moving parts to this. Um, they're five-year deals. Uh, if they go through the entire five-year deals, they could essentially end up uh, getting the NFL $1 billion. Wow. Okay. Um, DraftKings and FanDuel will have the right to integrate relative sports betting content directly in the NFL media properties including NFL.com. Okay. That's those guys. Caesars has a little different deal. Caesars and the NFL will collaborate on integrating NFL content into Caesars platform. And uh, they will also be able to do Caesars into the NFL properties, just like the FanDuel and DraftKings deal. But Caesars gets that extra thing. The NFL is going to work with them to integrate their content into Caesars platform. See, I'm very interested in how these three will mesh together in the NFL universe, you know, I mean, if you're going to see lines on the screen during broadcast for NFL, whose lines are they going to be? I'd be, I'd be very curious to see how everyone works together with the NFL. Well, again, it's it's going to be on the surface. You're probably not going to notice. Probably much. not. Probably a, not. A casual better or casual. Uh, I don't want to say casual fan because there's no such thing as a casual NFL fan anymore. Uh, people love this league no matter what they do, but. You're not going to see too much difference. You know, if you're going to see the highlights, you're going to see stuff like that. You're going to see DraftKings odds. You're going to see FanDuel's odds probably, different places, different sites. Uh, matter of fact, you may see a little section on the NFL.com website that has all the different promos. I'd be very curious to see that. I, I would assume that would be it. But look, I mean, if you're watching an NFL game in a sports betting jurisdiction, you're probably going to be in front of your cell phone looking at your favorite sports book. It might not even be FanDuel, DraftKings, or Caesar. So, But they may be hoping it becomes hey, I'm, I'm Caesars. Sure, I'm sure it will be. So. Those are that. Those are set up. I mean, this was all set up because of the Genius Sports deal the previous week. Yeah, 
And, and uh, when you say genius sports, sports deal, you don't mean a really smart sports no, deal. No, the it's name of the company, Genius, genius sports, sports, is the name of the company. Yeah. They ha- they run the data. Sure. They, they're the official distributor of the data and the analytics that go out there. And where the Genius Sports comes into play, these three operators, Caesars, DraftKings, and FanDuel, part of the deal is they must buy the data from Genius Sports. So this is where Genius gets their money out of all this stuff. So that was an impor- important first step. That Gen- Genius was the def- groundwork for it. Sure. Actually, if you think about it, Sport Radar was the groundwork a little while ago. Genius Sports did the overall data landscape kind of deal where they control everything. And now the sports betting operators come in through Genius into the NFL. See, all these deals, it's a roadmap to have this big sports betting universe that really works well to, with one another. So uh, it's very interesting to see the long-term plans of a company like the NFL and how, what deals they make and what deals they put on top of deals, with, on top of deals, on top of deals. And if you think about it, the NFL is perfect at doing all these types of deals because that's how they structured their, their media deals with the networks too. Sure. They take their time. They plot these out. There are so many different moving parts, but when you look at all the moving parts as a whole, they actually fit together perfectly and create a, a really great contract for the NFL. It expands it properly. It gets it to the consumer the right way. And they're going to have also with these sports betting deals, the, uh, the operators had to agree to adhere to the NFL integrity principles for the games. So a lot of the stuff, the NFL is still in charge ultimately with all this stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, Just like they are with the media deals. They are completely in charge of all these deals. Don't kid yourself. They may call them partners. They may do all this stuff. But really, it all stems from the league. And, I, I, you know, they're all going to work together fine. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm just curious how they how they'll fit together, I and mean, that's what I'm curious about. I, I think you're just going to be able to see different things. You know, like Caesars is going to be able to offer some of the NFL highlights directly from the NFL. Mm-hmm. Uh, DraftKings and FanDuel, you're going to see their content on the NFL media sites, but not the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So again, tw- little twists and turns here. Caesars, I think, is their big partner in all this, especially after the gaming deal they did uh, what two years ago. I think yeah, it was two years like, ago. Yeah. So again, we're starting to see the big picture here. I'm I'm very curious to see what happens with the broadcast rights now. Do you start seeing some of these interwoven into the broadcast deals? I know we had Fox Bet if, yeah, as will, part will of the they, Fox Sports. Will deal. they finally start talking about gambling? Well, they started to. They hinted they did. this year. They, did, they, yeah. they started talking. You know, when, when someone kicked an extra point or missed the extra point, I, I some of the broadcasters said, "Uh oh, that's going to hurt the over and stuff like that." But uh, well, they missed a lot of field goals yeah, last no, year, so they got they got to work on that part of it. But uh, you know, but uh, you know, I, I think it'll loosen up a lot. But it, it's actually it's actually wise. nice to see the NFL finally making their move. They're not done yet. There's a lot more to do. A lot of pieces to the pie for the for the football. I'm uh, sure they're not done this. yet. I'm sure no. they're not done yet. I'll be very interested to see if any of the leagues start working together. You know, the NFL, the NBA, not, they have all their separate deals. At some point, you're going to see some kind of conglomeration where you know, you they're know going what I'm together. Waiting, wait, you know what I'm waiting for? A couple of weeks ago, I, ha- I interviewed the president of gaming for the PGA Tour. I'm curious, going forward now, will we see a president of gaming for the NFL, a president of gaming for the MLB, a president of gaming for the NBA? I'm, I'm very curious if the position is going to be created based on gaming. Well, DraftKings just brought in a head of media. Yeah, yeah. So, That's, I mean, uh, it, it they, they're going to have to start doing all these gaming positions on the league side of everything. They're coming together. And you mentioned the PGA Tour. They just did a deal with uh, DraftKings. Oh yeah! Look, hey, look at that segue, huh? Technically, it's it's not a new deal; it's an expansion. Uh, it's a, yeah, I know an expansion. They're uh, they're expanding their relationship, I guess. The, the uh, for it. for mobile mobile and retail sports betting in Arizona, yeah. Arizona just uh, moved ahead and passed their sports betting bill into law. That's going to be fun to watch that region explode with uh, sports betting opportunities. But the right before the bill was signed by the by Governor uh, Ducey out there. Uh, the PGA Tour and DraftKings announced that the at the TPC Scottsdale golf site, golf uh, course, mm-hmm. they're going to be putting into motion plans to operate a premium retail sports book on the golf course. 
Nice. They have not figured out where exactly they're going to put the sports book. And I think they got to just look and see exactly not only where it can fit aesthetically, but also where in the timeline of when sports betting can actually launch in Arizona. I mean, everyone's saying by NFL, Super Bowl, yeah, not Super Bowl, but September. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know exactly whether or not that's actually going to happen. Maybe around there. Yeah. Maybe sooner, maybe later, depending on how quickly they move. But they are planning a a, a premium retail sports book. Uh, they want to do, and this is from the press release. They plan to create a visually stunning 19th hole experience at TPC Scottsdale where fans can gather year-round to place wagers, watch sports, and enjoy quality food and beverage options. So this is going to be a year-round thing. It's not just going to be when golf is there. I'm going to be very curious how this affects the Las Vegas market because, I mean, Arizona is right there. I mean, it's just very close to Las Vegas. You know, and I know a lot of times for the Super Bowl or World Series or even for the weekend for sports, people from Arizona travel to Las Vegas and Nevada. I'm, I'm very curious how this will affect the sports betting market in Nevada and especially Las Vegas because New Jersey is going to have that kind of same situation. Well, we have it right now with Pennsylvania, but when New York goes mobile – we're going to have that uh, <laughs> that uh, competition that uh, we weren't hoping for. I'm just curious to see which state will have the first golf course sports book, whether it's going to be Pennsylvania, New Jersey, or New York. Sounds like it's going to be Arizona pretty soon. Well, I'm talking about on the East Coast. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I mean, Arizona's got the first one, West yeah, Coast. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm I'm really shocked Nevada had didn't get one. Because they have tons of golf courses out there, and well, they might think about one now. Yeah, it, they're, it's it's almost interesting to see the things Nevada has overlooked or maybe purposely turned a blind eye to. I mean, I, Nevada just introduced. Well, look, they had no competition where they are. Well, think about it. Nevada just allowed MLB World Series MVP betting. I'm shocked with that. They just when you told it. me that, I was shocked with that. You know, I, I can't believe the the Nevada sports betting market didn't have what were they called what were they, what were they officially called the honors of uh, major league baseball or the awards for world major series league mvp was never part of the betting menu. Un- that's shocking that's shocking it will be me. now but they have other playoffs oh, sure, betting, sure, menu, but betting menus and all that I, i'm stuff. sure they have mvp and things like yeah, that but i'm shocked yeah. that you, they didn't have well no world series mvp, MVP they didn't is have now. that yeah, yeah, unbelievable. They have MVP for the ser- yeah. different series underneath, the, con- the championship series, all that stuff. It's just weird that, yeah, that is one that I thought they would have had a long Shocking. time ago. Shocking. But, again, it goes to my point that Nevada seems to be missing things. Or may- maybe all the other states that, that now have sports betting have made other people cognizant that certain things are missing in Nevada. Uh, yeah, well, and, and, again, I wonder if this is going to push Las Vegas and Nevada to do – other things with their sports betting markets to do uh, add more sports and things like maybe that. Maybe they'll finally waive that in-person registration requirement. Yeah, maybe. How about that? Especially since Illinois just reinstated theirs. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they're looking at removing that legislative-wise. Mm. So uh, we'll see if Illinois actually gets their act together and drops that in-person registration requirement. I, I had to look at the map for Arizona. I mean, it's right near Las Vegas. Yeah. Right near Henderson. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious to see uh, how that affects the uh, sports betting market of Las well, Vegas. Well, the sports betting market may also be affected by the deal with the Suns and, the, and FanDuel. Phoenix yeah, Suns and true. FanDuel. Yeah, yeah, they just did a deal. I got to tell right you, Ar- Arizona's of, jumping in with both feet. <laughs> right on the heels of the announcement of the bill being signed into law, the Phoenix Suns had a little um, uh, tweet out there, had a little uh, slide that said, had the Phoenix Suns logo and it said revolution is coming or something like that. And it was in FanDuel colors and everybody noticed the color scheme. And then they came out with this announcement that Fan- FanDuel and the Phoenix Suns have entered into a sports betting deal and pending approval, they're going to be building a luxury sports book in the Phoenix Suns arena. You know, the ink isn't even dry on the legislation and they're really making these massive deals. I, I love what Arizona's doing. Let me tell you love something. I-, I got the Good impression that Ducey was just starting the Y in his name, and they had deals already in yeah, place. Boom! So yeah. he, I don't think he even finished signing there his name go. before some of these deals are. But they're planning, legislation signed. Boom! Look at the deals. Look I, at the I don't, deals. As soon as Love the deals. as soon as Ducey said he was going to sign it. Oh yeah, I mean he, before it got to his desk, he said he was going to sign. They were talking it, so, before that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
But uh, it's going to be a 6,300-square-foot luxury sports book, and it's going to be open daily, not just on game day. Because I remember in Maryland, that yeah, was one of What story did we have? We had Maryland. Yeah. It was going to be doing just on game day. That changed altogether. I, I, I thought that was stupid, and I guess other people thought that was stupid, and I guess the Maryland's changing that, right? Maryland has changed it. It has changed it. it. Will, okay, it's good. going to the governor's desk to be signed. Good. Their new bill will allow as many as 60 sports betting licenses. Okay, good. They, I mean, they really went. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And and the, a lot of it's geared toward the small business. I think we talked about sure, that yeah, last yeah, week. No. So, But they, you know, they've got here, t- uh, t- uh, let's see, guaranteed on-site licenses for six casinos. The six casinos there if they want it. And then here you go. They have teams that play in the state's three professional football and baseball stadiums, the Maryland Jockey Club for use at Laurel Park and Pimlico Racetracks, the Maryland State Fairgrounds, four off-track betting locations, and the state's two largest bingo halls are all eligible to get licenses Wow! in Maryland okay, under this new version of the law. So uh, a lot of things have been happening here. Uh, let's see. One other thing, a little piece of news. Uh, I don't want to skip anything here, but a quick update before we move on to uh, the numbers. Tennessee Action 24-7 is up and running. Uh, the court said that the Tennessee Education Lottery, which issued the suspension prior to the court case to reinstate it, they said they can't go back and hear this again. So can't take another bite of the apple, They can't take another right? bite of the apple. So they, Tennessee is free and clear, and I know a lot of people are anticipating more problems. I don't know. I think they've cleaned up their act a lot in terms of behind-the-scenes stuff with the uh, – proxy betting and all that, I think they're going to be more aware of that. Well, look, they found a problem and they corrected it right away. So um, that's what a sports book should do. And I think they probably did the right thing. Yeah. And I think also t- Tennessee learned a really valuable lesson on how to proceed with these things, too, in terms of procedures, rules, emergency hearings, and also follows along with the uh, new bill that was just passed allowing the Sports Wagering Advisory Council to meet and make decisions on its own, separate from the Tennessee Lottery Board. So they took some power away from I wonder if that's going to cause more problems. I don't, more I, problems between agencies. Well, the the agency that just got this, the Sports Wagering Advisory so, Council, wait, wait, are who, the ones who, who can suspend. Who will a sports book report to? They're licensed by the lottery. Okay, so that's who they report to. But also the way, Sports Wagering Advisory Council will be the ones taking action. Okay. So two different two two different entities, both work in the sports betting operations. Why do I feel that's going to be an issue? There's going to be something missed. <laughs> uh, well, they got to get that straightened out. They're going to have to deal with some more regulations, more procedural things to do. I, I think it's a great move getting it away from the lottery because the lottery should be licensing it. Well, I, I don't know if it's getting away from the lottery. Well, they're not going to be in charge as much as they were oh, before. Okay. So you know, I think maybe good move. They're going to have some problems get up and running kind of thing the first couple of times. Well, look, they're going to have to figure out boundaries. They've got to figure out what agency is doing what, what agency is overseeing what aspect of sports betting. And once they get that right, I mean, I think everything will run smoothly. Well, good luck with Tennessee. Going over to the number side of everything, we did this book report in reverse this time. Oh, okay. Um, the Grand National over in Great Britain was held Okay. Uh, this past weekend or yeah, last weekend. All right, I'm sorry. yeah, female jockey. First female jockey ever. Absolutely. One Congratulations. At, one at odds of 11 to 1, Rachel Blackmore. 11 to 1 odds, really? Yeah. Wow, that's a nice payout. Uh, and uh, according to reports, the Grand National was Britain's biggest ever online sports betting event. Over 100 million pounds was bet. Wow. Okay. $137 million, U.S. dollars. Uh, that's even with Entain... And Patty Power and Betfair and William Hill all reporting the actual numbers were lower than uh, previous years because of COVID uh, restrictions. So, wait, wait, wait. Why were they reporting it was lower? The total takings were lower than the previous years due to the coronavirus because all the other things around it, too. Oh, all right. You know, didn't happen. No in-person betting. Okay. All right. So, all they had was really basically uh, online. And they still did well. They still did well, but still lower than what they thought they were going to be doing. Okay. All right. Uh, Going back over the pond, back here in the United States, we've got New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Michigan all reporting their March numbers. Michigan only their retail March numbers. Uh, Total retail handle in Michigan was $24.2 million, a 12.2% hold. 
pretty so good. So that was that was that was pretty good. Pretty Two point nine million in revenue for the month of March. You know why? Because there's so many upsets in the first round in March Madness. Well, <laughs> I would have thought some of these numbers would have been a little higher because of March Madness, but you well, know, look, uh, well, in Indiana's total handle for March was three hundred sixteen point seven million. That's number two all time for Indiana. Okay, increase of over two hundred forty million, or more than three hundred percent from March of the previous year. So they had a huge jump from year to year, up only fifteen percent from February. Revenue twenty six million increase of nine point three from uh, from February twenty point eight from year over year March twenty twenty, win rate of eight point three two percent. Um, top sport was surprisingly basketball. Oh, of course, oh, of course. Uh, basketball bets were up twenty eight point eight percent from February and three hundred and fifty nine percent from March of twenty twenty. So they had a huge increase in basketball betting in March. Wow. Uh, Pennsylvania, they had a March handle of five hundred sixty million. Taxable revenue was twenty nine point three million. Online revenue twenty five point nine eight million. So the majority of betting came in from online again. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Com- they had the twenty nine million. This is another huge number. The twenty nine million in revenue for March of twenty twenty one compared to March of twenty twenty was up 326%. Wow. Okay. Uh, I, I noticed this in the report. The, some of these numbers are crazy, especially the percentages of what they've increased year over year. It's just remarkable. You never think of those kind of numbers when dealing with sports betting, but it's incredible. Here, here's an interesting thing I saw in the uh, Pennsylvania report. Valley Forge and Mount Airy were the only properties to report negative retail sports betting revenue. Really? But... Valley Forge led all online operators with ten point four million dollars. Hmm. Okay. So retail was not king for them, but no, online no. was. So uh, ten point four million is not a bad number to bring in revenue wise for online. I, I got to tell you, I like the Valley Forge casino. The one time I was, it's, it's one of those weird casinos. When I was there, anyway, you, you had to buy a temporary membership to get on. What was that, like a license, a C license or a license C C, kind a C of casino. A yeah, C casino. Yeah. Did they change that yet? Or I don't know. That's, that's a good question. Yeah, but. no, no. When we when you go there, I, well, when I went there, it was uh, a couple years ago, and you actually had to purchase a membership, which was very small. A day, a day pass. A day pass. It's right. like going to Great Adventure. Yeah, a day pass to get I'm in. Sorry if you're not from Jersey. <laughs> Six Flags. <laughs> to, to get into the casino. You had to... Uh, it's like a bizarre little cover charge. Yep. And Wind Creek and Presque Isle Downs both reported negative online revenue for sports betting. Over in New Jersey, they they just came out with their numbers uh, as we're taping this. It was kind of recent that they released them. Uh, sports wagering handle for the month of March was $859.6 million. 780 of that was done online. Gross revenue was $60.8 million for the month. That's another 360% increase year over year. See, that's what I'm talking about. That number is crazy. Well, again, for between <laughs> between crazy. last year and this oh, yeah. year, you know, a, a lot of things happened. I mean, I, th- yeah. I think there are a lot more sports books again, too. I got to tell you, I, I got a new cell phone, and one whole page of that is devoted to my gambling apps. And books and casinos. It's ridiculous. I mean, I'm looking at it and thinking, oh, my God, what the hell's wrong with me? And, of course, do you have the fantasy sports stuff, too? You have I do. I do. Monkey have Monkey Knife Fight. And, I have uh, FanDuel, and I have Monkey Knife Fight. I have the FanDuel sports book, and I also have the FanDuel fantasy app, too. So uh, I... I got my bases covered. Plus, I have about I found like six more sports books on it. So, I'm, I'm I'm thinking, gee, will my phone handle this? Or but it there's a lot more room on these pe- new phones. It appears to be doing well. Uh, let's see. In terms of revenue, the Meadowlands license reported 31.2 million. They were the leader in revenue. Resorts came in second with 14.15 million in revenue. Everybody else was just bunched together. Uh, sports wagering gross revenue year to date. $189 million, and the handle year-to-date, $2.56 billion already. Wow. For January, February, March. This is Jersey, Jersey year-to-date oh, handle. Wow. wow. Okay. $2.356 billion was done online. And the state as a, as a whole for the year-to-date, 7.4% win rate. Great. So that's uh, the rundown, the numbers, the launches, the deals. 
um, for this week. Oh, and uh, before I forget, ESPN had their very first betcast for the, what was it, the Sixers-Nets game? I forgot. You know, I watched that game. I didn't watch the betcast. I forgot all about it. I flipped between the two just to see how it was. Yeah, well, I, the problem, I never think, when I see Sixers and Nets, I have both of the local channels here, and that's the one I saw. So, Well, not bad. Okay. But it was the guys by the right. Daily Wager was the first. It, it was I, actually called the ESPN Daily Wager Betcast right. or something I, I, like that. Yeah, I forgot all about it. They're going to be. They, they're, they don't know if they're going to do more of that. I think, judging by the reaction I'm seeing from some people out there, they may do more. Great. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I'll, I'll be sure if, to catch it. If you're a hardcore gambler, <laughs> sure like you, like you, like with the golf betcast that points bet did with NBC Sports, I like that. That was very good. That was a lot easier to follow. I thought yeah. basketball's a little too fast moving for all the little stats that they throw out in terms of you know this guy's a half point under his uh over or his total for rebounds or something Although, hey if you're betting a game and you're you're betting like those prop bets that's a great thing to have that's a great thing to know yeah. especially if you're even fantasy sports that's a great thing to know the one thing i, I missed and i wanted to see i wanted to see the pre and the halftime shows Huh, I, you know, I didn't even know they were doing it. I knew they, they, they were doing a betcast. They were doing the they were pre, doing they were doing a halftime. halftime, they were doing the betcast. Next time they do this, if they do another one, I'm going to try and watch the entire thing. But it was actually pretty good. Intense. Uh, you know, I'm not a I'm not a hardcore better, I'll be honest with you. I'm a casual better. I mean, I'll follow the business stuff and all that Did, stuff. But Now let me ask you something from someone who didn't see it, who forgot to turn it on. I mean, was it a screen, the 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 screen with them playing on it and then did it have the chirons going down and across and things like it that? It reminded me of Bloomberg TV. Oh, like the, uh, so if you're a, uh, you got a right financial column. advisor and you're watching one of those business shows about stocks, yes. that's how much information they had? That's okay. how much information they had down the right they column, had the they had across the across. bottom, they okay. had a, then they had stuff popping up on the screen. Oh, okay. So it, they, they did everything possible. Hey, I'll they, check it out next time. Yeah, so. Like uh, I said, they were both local teams here in New Jersey. We get the local, like, like channels and you know when the Sixers and the Nets are on you you turn on the local channel you never think about the And it ESPN. was it was by the guys who did the Daily Wager Great, who do the good. Daily Wager okay. so it was actually kind of it was entertaining and again for for me a little overwhelming in certain times Okay but overall good broadcast Great. good betcast I'm sorry and that's it for the book report this week. Um, whatever we didn't cover on, on air here, you'll see in print form at the blog. Go to TurnpikeSportsRadio.com and click on the blog button. Feel free to uh, submit your own stories, too. Info at TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike. Turnpike.